Lust is a general want or longing for someone or something. Lust is never satisfied in mankind, as one will always need more and want more. The Bible discourages us from developing lusts, as it is a form of sin that brings a separation between God and man. The entry of sin into the world was majorly brought about by lust. The Bible says that when the woman, Eve, saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, pride of life, she took of its fruit and ate. Genesis 3, 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. The Bible discourages us from loving the world and the things of the world. 1 John 2, 15-17 Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Some things are ungodly that people get into that becomes very hard to get out of. We see people struggle to be freed from what they have entered into consciously and unconsciously. And this feels like they are tied down by someone or something. When one is tied to a spot, it is impossible to move away from that place. If that person is allowed to move, the movement would be limited. In this same way, many people have been tied down to a spot by a sin they have allowed into their lives. This sin, when it is constantly repeated, some evil spirits take advantage of it and make it become what they control in your life. Now, you don't have control over that sin anymore. They have taken control from you. Evil spirits push and compel and harass people into doing this sin. The age-old saying is still true to this day. Give the devil an inch and he will take a mile. Open up the door just a little bit for the enemy and he will come camp there and will do everything he can to stay. One of the tricks of the devil is to make a strong desire of lust in men. And you will totally agree with me that the world systems are really working hard to create a lust through its systems. The entertainment systems is where most people are affected by lust. This is how the devil is targeting and trapping people through screens, the internet, television, billboards, magazines, movies, newspapers, and the social media are full of lustful images that are aimed at arousing many to sexual sin. And one of the ways we do this is through repeated sin. Repeated sin opens the door for evil spirits in your life. What we call this is addiction. That is the simple word we use for repeated sin. When you constantly engage in an ungodly thing, it becomes an addiction. To the point you can call it an addiction, you realize you are no longer in control of this sin anymore. It just gets to you and you do it. That is a spirit. That is an evil spirit that urges and pushes you into that sin. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 that this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. There is a need for us to walk in the spirit at all times so that we will not fall into temptation. When we fall into temptation, it is not always easy to get out of it because the sin tries to pin us down until it becomes a stronghold in our life. A perfect example of this is masturbation and watching indecent things on the internet. There are literally thousands of Christians who struggle with this sin. It is not as if they want to do it, but during the course of 24 hours in a day, the feeling of an uncontrollable urge and then an evil spirit entices them. Let's say something pops up on the internet or in a film they're watching. Then the next thing they know, they're committing that sin. And afterwards, there's a sense of shame. They didn't want to do it. They feel like, what's the point of me trying to pray to God? This has become the highest success of the devil because it escalates evil both in believers and non-believers. King David was a great man of God who did great things by the mighty hand of God. In fact, the Bible calls him a man after God's heart. But the devil only used lust to ruin his reputation. 2 Samuel 11, 2-5 Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house, and the woman conceived. So she sent and told David, and said, I am with child. Verse 15 
And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retreat from him, that he may be struck down and die. God wasn't pleased with David, as lust had led him to commit adultery, and later on murder Uriah the husband of Bathsheba so as to cover up his sin. This later came to affect David when he wanted to build a temple for the Lord. He was rejected as his hands had blood. Because of the great effects of lust, man should find ways of overcoming it. Believers still have the sinful nature inside of them, and therefore they should always be careful not to fall into the trap of the devil. There are different ways by which sin can be introduced into one's life. We should not just examine these ways, but we must also make sure that we block all of these ways so that we will not find ourselves in problems. What are the ways sin can be introduced into a life? through different social media or TV programs. This is something that Christians have been battling for a long time now. There are times you will be used in the internet for something important and some pornographic content will be displayed on your screen suddenly. There have been many ways to prevent these, but they just keep coming. Not all Christians have the power or the strength to skip these contents. Many of them have been tempted and they have fallen. We are not judging people, but we pray that God will deliver them. It is not easy. Many Christians have fallen into these traps and they have become addicted to watching pornographic content. Paul said in Romans chapter 15 verse 1 KJV that we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. We need to pray for these people who have been affected if we are strong. We must not judge them in any way. Another way sin enters into the introduction stage is through friends, neighbors, or loved ones. This is not to cause any form of hatred for anyone but to open our minds and know when to reject some things. We cannot say because they are close to us, we should allow them to influence us into doing ungodly things. What you don't know is, once they introduce this into your life and you accept it, you have allowed them to plant into your life a seed of sin and it will grow to destroy things in your life. Your spiritual life is important. The things you do are important. Your relationship status with God is important. You must not allow anyone to destroy that relationship by introducing poison into your life. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 33 through 34, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning. For there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. It will always bring shame. The sin that you have tried to stop will always take you into shame. What will you think of someone who gossips? People that steal, when they're caught, they are ashamed of themselves. It doesn't matter the stage you're in right now. It doesn't matter what you are going through right now. I know it always feels like you are not getting out of this trap, but the truth is that you can always get out of it with the help of Christ. Jesus is always ready to help you out of every sin. All you have to do is accept Jesus and walk in the path of righteousness. It is also important to know that every form of addictions can be forgiven. You also need to talk to trusted people, people who can counsel you and help you stand and stay strong. Let Jesus lead you. Let him take you in the path of righteousness and focus on him, the author and finisher of your faith. The following are some of the ways of overcoming lust in our lives. Non-conformity to the patterns of this world. To conform to the world is to live a life that is according to the patterns of this world and the world's systems. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. 1 John 2.17 The world is full of lust. And if not careful, one may easily not accomplish the will of God in their lives. Paul in Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renewal of the mind means that after one is born again, he should completely cut himself off from the world and its systems. One should now focus on the things of God rather than the things of the world. Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness, walking in the spirit. 
One of the great enemies of man is his flesh. The flesh has its demands that need to be fulfilled. Therefore, when one gets born again, there is a constant war between the Spirit of God in the believer and his flesh. The victory to this battle will depend on which of these two, spirit or flesh, is fed. If you feed your mind with spiritual things, and by reading the Word of God and meditating upon it, with constant prayer, you will be walking by the Spirit. But on the other hand, if you decide to conduct yourself in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, you will live a defeated Christian life, and you will be walking in the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 through 17. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Resist and flee. Joseph avoided committing the sin of adultery that comes with lust, because he fled from the trap of Potiphar's wife. Sometimes we may be entertaining the things that bring lust in our lives so much. Solomon, in his wisdom, asked these questions. Proverbs 6, 27 through 28. Can a man take fire to his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one walk on hot coals, and his feet not be seared? Matthew 5, 29 through 30. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. If, for example, I know the internet causes me to stumble in lust and sexual sin, I would rather flee from the internet. Stop spending unnecessary time on it and read the Word of God. We can easily overcome lust by identifying the areas that the devil brings lust in our lives and fleeing from them. This will also be accompanied by our submission to the Word of God. James 4, 7 through 8. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded.